Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome. I know that there was a mistake on yesterday's video with no sound, so today we're going to uh, join two lessons and we're going to review yesterday's lesson and today's lesson. So today's lesson is module 18, represent and interpret data. And we're going to review lessons one and two, so using and drawing picture graphs. Lesson one begins on page 457, so if you turn to that page, you can follow along with me. And the ICANN objective of both lessons reads, I can use data in a picture graph and draw a scaled picture graph to solve how many more and how many less problems. So boys and girls, we're not going to start with uh, number one. We're on number two on the build understanding from yesterday. And it says number two, Rowan records the types of plants sold at the store on Saturday. And if we look at our table, we see that the title is plants sold. And we have five different types of plants, cactus, aloe, violet, bamboo, and lily and an important part in our table is our key our key says that each drawing of a plant equals four plants okay a what equation can you write to find the number of aloe plants sold how many aloe plants were sold well, in A, it's asking us for us to do two things. It wants an equation, and it also wants how many aloe plants were sold. So a common misconception, boys and girls, some of you find this easy, and you go ahead and you write your answer, but you have to do the other part of it, and the other part is to write an equation. So right now, let's highlight, or let's look at, let's highlight our aloe plants, and we're focusing on the information right in here. Okay, um, so aloe plants that are sold, I see one, two, one, two, three, four, five flower pots or five drawings. Um, but that isn't my answer. Remember, we have to refer back to our key to see how much each one of those stands for. So I know that each flower pot stands for four plants. So I'm just going to go ahead and label four, four, four four and four just so that you can visualize it and now there's more than one equation that we can write since it's equal groups i like to use multiplication so i'm going to write five which represents the five flower pots times four which represents four plants for each of those drawings and that gives me 20. Can you think of any other equations that you can write? Well, if you said repeated addition, you were correct. We can also use repeated addition. Four plants plus four plants plus four plants plus four plants plus four plants, plus four plants equals 20. Okay, and make sure that you write your complete equation and a complete equation has your equal sign and uh, and your answer. So the answer is 20 aloe plants. Now let's look at B. What equations can you write to find the number of bamboo plants sold? How many bamboo bamboo plants were sold? So now I'm going to go ahead and highlight bamboo and we're focusing on this part of the table. Okay. And let's take a look. I see that I have two whole flower pots, one, two, but then my third one isn't complete. What do you think that could mean when I'm only showing half of a bamboo plant or half of a picture? Well, it's probably going to equal half of the value in my key. So I'm going to go ahead and label these. So I know that each whole flower pot is worth four plants. And if I only have half of a flower pot, what is half of four? Well, if I take four and I put it into two equal groups, each group is worth two. So half of four 
is worth two. Okay, and now it asks you to write um, an equation to solve this. So I can use my addition. It's not repeated addition because one of the numbers is different. So I can say four plus four plus two. And I know that my four plus four is eight plus two more is 10. Or I can also use parentheses. And I know a lot of you boys and girls love using the parentheses. So let's think of how we can put this information um, into an equation with parentheses using multiplication and addition. Well, inside my parentheses, I'm going to put my equal groups. There were two equal groups. And each of those equal groups were worth four. So two times four. And after I do my two times four, what can I add to the rest of that to find the rest of the, the half of a plant? I'm gonna add my two. So two times four is eight. And then my plus two, it gives me the same answer, 10. So what I'm doing in the parentheses, boys and girls, is the same thing that I did here first. So instead of adding four plus four, in my parentheses, I said two times four. And then I added my plus two right at the end. So there are 10 bamboo plants. And C, how can you find how many more aloe plants than bamboo plants were sold? Okay, so now we're comparing Now we're comparing the aloe plants and the bamboo plants. And when we want to find out how many more, we want to find the difference between two or more things. Okay? We know that we that they sold 20 aloe plants. Oh, sorry boys and girls. We know that they sold 20 aloe plants. And we sold, and we know that they sold 10 bamboo plants. They sold more aloe plants than bamboo plants. So let's find the difference. 20 minus 10 equals 10. So they sold 10 more aloe plants than bamboo plants. And if we want to look at our chart, Let's cross off what they have in common. Well, they each have one whole plant, which is four. They each have another whole plant or flower pot, which is another four. And then the bamboo has two, so I'm only gonna cross off two. And that leaves me with two on this side. So the aloe plant has four, eight, 10 more than the bamboo plant. Now let's look at the build understanding um, on lesson two, and we'll start with number one. Mr. Hom counts and records in a table the number of tools he has. And if we look at our table, um, we notice that it has a title and it's called tool supply. And then there's two columns, column one and column two. Column one is labeled tools, and column two is labeled number. And it's really important to label our tables or our graphs so that when anyone reads it, they understand the information being shown. So underneath tools, it gives you four different types of tools, screwdrivers, wrenches, bolts, and nuts. And underneath the number, it tells us how many for each corresponding tool, so eight screwdrivers, 12 wrenches, 24 bolts, and 18 nuts. So A, how can you tell what a picture graph is about? Well, by looking at the title um, and the labels, you can tell what a picture graph is about. So by reading the title oh, and labels. B, how many should one symbol represent? Choose a number greater than one. So when we're making a picture graph, boys and girls, we don't wanna draw a picture 
um, for each number that represents one. So I wouldn't want to draw eight circles for eight screwdrivers. We're looking for a picture that represents that number, but counting by more than one. So counting by twos or by threes or by fours. But first you have to look at your numbers. So I have an eight, a 12, a 24, and an 18. Well, I know that counting by threes won't work because I get three, six, nine, 12, 15. So I don't hit a lot of these numbers. I, I can't make the number eight. Okay, so what's a different number that you think you can count by? Well, since they're both even, they're all even numbers, we can definitely count by twos. And um, we may even possibly be able to count by fours. Okay, but let's stick with two. So we're going to count by twos. How many symbols will you draw for each tool? Well, let's think about it. If we are doing the screwdriver first and we're counting by twos, how many groups of two do you need to make eight? Well, I would have to draw four symbols. Two, four, six, eight. What about for the wrenches? Twelve divided by two is six. So I would draw six symbols. What about the bolts? I have 24. What times four, I'm, I'm sorry, what times two is 24? Hmm, 12. 12 times two is 24. And then 18. I know that nine times two is 18, so I'm gonna draw nine symbols, okay? So let's go ahead and you can write that in here, um, but let's go ahead and, and fill in our picture graph. So the title of my picture graph is Tool Supply. Okay, and I'm going to first list my tools. I have screwdrivers. I have wrenches. I have bolts and nuts. And my key is every, each symbol that I'm going to make up is equal to two tools. Okay, and now you have to decide what kind of symbol you want. Boys and girls, I would suggest making something easy. I know that in the other example, they had a flower pot with a flower, um, but that's difficult for you to draw when you're when you're doing your math. So. I'm going to stick with just a circle. I know that it's easy for me to draw a circle, and I also know that it's easy for me to cut a circle in half. So let's go ahead with the screwdrivers. If I have eight screwdrivers and each circle represents two, then I want to draw one, two, three, four. And just to make sure that we're correct, I'm going to go ahead and do a number two in here. So two, four, six, eight. So I'm correct. So now I'm gonna to go to the rest. Wrenches, I'm gonna draw, I wanna draw, I have 12 wrenches, so I wanna draw six circles. One, two, three, four, five, six. For bolts, I have 24 bolts, so I wanna draw 12 circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And I'm sorry I couldn't fit it in there, boys and girls. It's hard to do on the computer. And for nuts, I want to draw nine. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I should have uh, nine circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because I counted by twos. Okay. Now let's say that I increased the number of screwdrivers 
And instead of having eight screwdrivers, I said there were nine screwdrivers. What could I do to that picture graph to, act, uh, to accurately portray that there's nine screwdrivers? Well, if I draw a whole circle, I'm going to have 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. So I don't want a whole circle. But if I draw a half of a circle, let's try that again. If I draw a half of a circle, that would represent uh, one. So then I would have two, four, six, eight, nine. So then I would have my nine screwdrivers. And since today is Cinco de Mayo, let's take a look at a different problem and let's um, let's build a picture graph together. So mini taco night. So tonight we're making mini tacos. Okay, and I have a list of four people and how many mini tacos they will eat. So Scarlett will eat two mini tacos. Tyler will eat five mini tacos. Sandra will eat four mini tacos and Miguel will eat seven mini tacos. Okay, and I have my title. And I have my labels. So my table is easy to read. So now let's go ahead and we're going to create a, a picture graph, okay? And as you see, I have my title. Um, it matches my, my table, so it's easy to read. And on the bottom, I have my key. The key is very important. If you don't give us a key, boys and girls, I don't know how many, uh, how what the quantity that each picture or each symbol stands for. So since I have the numbers two, five, four, and seven, I decided to make each symbol worth two, okay? And the symbol that I'm using is a little rectangle, okay, almost like a picture frame. So each, each of those uh, rectangles is worth two tacos. Well, if Scarlett is eating two tacos, how many pictures or how many symbols should I put in her, in her row? One, okay? Um, each one is worth two, so Scarlett eats two, so she only gets one picture. For Tyler, he's eating five, so let's count by uh, twos. So we have two, four, but I know that I can't add another whole one, because if I add another whole one, uh, a whole symbol, I'm going to get six. So I'm going to add half of that symbol, which would be one, so two, four, five, okay? And that's because each one of these represents, this represents two, this represents two, and this one represents one. Sandra's eating four um, tacos, so I know that four divided by two is two, so I should have two of the symbols. And Miguel eats seven. I know that seven is not an even number, so I'm not going to have complete symbols. So let's see, let's count by twos. Two, four, six. If I add another one, I'm going to have eight. So I'm gonna add half of a symbol, and that represents one. So two, four, six, seven. So now I have my picture graph for mini taco night. Um, with all of my symbols. Okay, boys and girls, now it's your turn. I want you to try number two through five on the On Your Own. You're going to pause the video, and when you're ready, please come back. Okay, welcome back, boys and girls, and let's see how you did. So On Your Own, we see that we have a table, weekly math challenge. So weeks, week one, week two, week three, and week four, and students, 15, 25, 10, and five. So it says, the students in Miss Dover's class try to solve a math challenge every week. Miss Dover records the number of students who solve the challenge. So boys and girls, it sounds like they're having a contest, kind of like we have an eye ready. Um, and they're recording how many students are solving the weekly math challenge. So, number two, make a pictograph 
a picture graph that shows the data. How will you decide which number to use for your key? Well, let's take a look at our numbers. We have 15, 25, 10, and 5. What do you see about those numbers when you're thinking about multiplication and division? What do you notice about those numbers? Well, I notice that there is either a 5 or a 0 in all the 1's places. And I know that my multiples of 5, or when I'm counting by 5, always have a 5 or a 0 in the 1's place. So I think that I could use the number 5. Okay. How many more students solve the math challenge in week 1 than in week three. Well, let's complete our pictograph, our picture graph first, and then we'll come back to that. So let's write our title, weekly math challenge. Okay, and week one, we are using a symbol and we're gonna represent it with five students. What symbol would you like to use? You can use your own, whatever you used. Uh, make it something that is easy to draw and easy to split in half if you need to. This time I'm gonna use a triangle. Okay, and I know that each of those triangles is going to represent five students. So for week one, I have 15 students. So if I'm counting by fives, five, 10, 15, I have to count three times. So I have to make three triangles. One, two, three. For week two, I have 25 students. So let's think about it. Five times blank equals 25. Oh, five times five. So now I'm gonna make five triangles. One, two, three, four, five. For week three, I have 10, and I know that 10 divided by five is two groups, so I'm gonna put two triangles. And for week four, I have five, so I'm gonna use one uh, triangle, because I know that each triangle represents five students. And there I have my pictograph, my picture graph. So how many more students solve the math challenge in week one than in week three? So we wanting, we want to compare week one and week three, okay? There's several ways that I can do this, okay? I can subtract to find the difference. I know that there were 15 students in week one and I know that there were 10 students in week two, so 15 minus 10 equals five. So there were five more students in week one. I can also go ahead and look at my picture graph and use the symbols to help me. Well, they each have two whole triangles. So if I cross those off, I can find the difference. I can find what's different between the two weeks. And the difference is that week one has one more triangle. And that one more triangle is representative of five students. So week one has five more students than week three. Number four, how many fewer students solve the math challenge in week four than in week two. So now we're comparing again, but we're comparing week two and week four. Wow, a lot fewer students solve the math challenge on week four than on week two. And let's see how many fewer. For week two, I have five, 10, 15, 20, 25 students. And in week four, I have five students. So again, I can subtract to find the difference. 25 students minus five equals 20. But I could also use my picture graph, the symbols. So they each, the only thing they have in common is one complete triangle. So I'm gonna cross that off. And then the difference is that there are five, five, five and five, so five, 10, 15, 20. So week four has 20 fewer students. 
Number five, Alma will use a symbol of a smiley face to stand for five students. How should a row look for week two? Okay, so she's using five, uh, a smiley face to stand for five students, um, and we pick the same number. So it's going to look the same, except she's using uh, smiley faces. So let's see. Um, let's change this problem, and let's see what it would look like if she was using it for two students, okay? Um, so week two has 25 students. So each smiley face equals two students. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. I can't add another smiley face or else I get 26. So what can I do? There's that half again, right? So we're going to go ahead and ha add a half of a smiley face. So that would be 25. And the reason I changed the number, boys and girls, is because in this problem, it already gave you the quantity of five. Um, so hers would just look like smiley faces instead of triangles, okay? And I wanted us to try something different. I wanted us to try one that had a half. Okay, so boys and girls, I hope you are ready. Um, I know that I gave this assignment yesterday. Uh, many of you have been working on the diagnostic test that needs to be completed. So please make sure you finish that up so that you can get to the two teacher assigned lessons, draw scaled picture graphs and solve problems using scaled picture graphs. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Today the sound works, so everything should be fine on the video. Um, also, remember, your iReady contest is in full effect. Last week, the students got pizzas, and they were so excited. This week, uh, we're still going or next week, when it finishes, we're still going to have three winners that get pizza. But also, if every single student in third grade um, does iReady for at least 100 minutes, Mr. Huber and I will each record our own TikTok video for you guys. So let us know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, okay, and reach out. I'm here.